Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and this video is all about Anna Digi watches, all probably from the 80s. Uh, so I'm going to go through my little collection I've got here. Uh, first of all though, if you are new to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're going to enjoy this video and if you do, please leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe. So guys, what you can see in front of you is my collection of and a digi watches. Uh, I went on a little bit of a crusade last year, uh, 2018, um, and bought various ones of these, as you can see in front of you, and practically all of these have, I've had to work on uh, to get them uh, up to scratch. So I will be leaving links in places uh, to maybe some blogs on my website, uh, things like that, so you might be able to read up a bit more if you want to. And of course, I'll be posting some pictures throughout the uh, the video to help with uh, what I'm trying to describe. So I'm going to start off in no real order, I'm going to try and do these loose ones. Uh, so the first one here is uh, called a, a Zetron. And this is quite an interesting watch because there's lots of other versions of these. I've seen them from different brands, but exactly the same watch. And then of course there is an iconic uh, Seiko version, which is probably the original, if you like, that everybody else has copied. Um, but it's really nice. It's cheap inside should i say um, but the actual visuals are very very nice indeed nice clear bold uh, ltd screen and the clock works as well uh, on this one i just had to strip it down clean it um, there was a bit of corrosion inside put a new battery in and it fired up uh, we've got things like the usual stopwatch and i can't remember all the features on these things uh, we've got an alarm and of course the other display. Now I can't get out of that, you see, so there we go. Um, so you could have dual time if you wanted to, or you have it as an analog uh, and the normal time set at the same. Very interesting watch all the same. I do like it, uh, it looks good on the wrist. And I do see these um, quite often on eBay. These kind of watches, you don't have to pay a lot for them, to be honest with you, they are a, a, a you know a special taste i suppose uh, but me i was uh, i was born in the 70s uh, my later school life was in the 80s and that's when all these were the rage and of course we all wore these at school so i'm kind of like go, going back to my childhood by watching uh, but watching by buying these type of uh, watches uh, i'm then going to do this one so this is a little bit more special this is a, a, a citizen anna digi temp so it actually tells you the temperature along with various displays that you can see there. Um, sometimes it's not working as good as others. I've actually done a whole video on this one. Um, so I'll leave a link in a card just above right now and you'll be able to check that out if you want to. It was a bit of a, a task to get this one going. I had to use a donor uh, in order to get it going. The boards on these are pretty notorious. Now there's a friend of mine on the uh, Facebook group um, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations, and he is called Zeth Clary. And he is a bit of an expert at fixing these things, and he does sell a few as well. So if some of you guys are interested in Anadigi temps, then he is, I'd love to call him the world expert, but he wouldn't like me to say that, but there we go. Uh, so it is gonna tell you the temperature. It's telling you down here. The sensor's actually underneath here on the, on the circuit board. And the instructions actually tell you that it doesn't really tell you the temperature unless you take the watch off and leave it in a room for a half an hour or so because when you wear it, it uh, takes up your body heat. So at the moment it's still escalating. It's at 19.2 stroke three degrees. Um, you have two quite cool readouts. Um, so an analog clock, seconds, and these all sort of double up if you wanted to use the stopwatch features. This has got a stopwatch and an alarm. Um, I can never remember exactly how to use them all. So the stopwatch is working as you can see there. And then it's gonna go back to, I'm sure on the stopwatch, the second hand is supposed to move as well, but maybe not. Uh, this one is a little bit rarer because it's got this black surround. Uh, they don't normally come with that. Um, and these sort of black bits on the links here. And the model reference on this one is a Citizen 8981. Pretty cool watch. 
And I bought this in a job lot, would you believe? And I think the job lot ended at something like half past seven in the morning. And um, I was up already. And I think I won the job lot for, uh, it was nothing. It was like five, six pounds. Uh, this was hidden away, but I, my eagle eyes spotted it because these do hold a little bit more value. Um, it took me a bit longer, of course, to find a working donor, but hey, we did. Gonna do the next citizen. And this is my particular favorite. And if, you see, if you're see, if you in the groups, you'll see me wear this a lot and post it. This has to be my biggest uh, challenge to date on these type of watches. This required three donor watches. Uh, I could always get the readout to work, but I could never get the analog part to work. I had repaired boards. I, you know, repaired the tracks on the boards, did all kinds of things. Uh, but what typically happens on this, and it must be a... Um, a design flaw really is that the batteries leak and the battery acid seems to always run onto the coil or on the coil contacts that, that you know make it touch the board and they rot away and they're impossible to fix uh, so all the donors that I've got uh, I just kept on taking a chance on them and they eventually cobbled together one good watch from all the other ones I then had to re uh, loom these dots of which ones actually fell off um, but it was a really, really good watch. I, I love the way that to set the time, you have to pull out the crown here and you have to move it, as you can see. It's quite an unusual feature. And you have the light. And I think this has some other features as well. Date, of course, uh, alarm. And somewhere, I'm sure it had a stopwatch. There we are. Uh, but I love the shape. It's a really unusual shape. A lot of these citizens have this color coordinated on them as well, the yellow pusher and the black pusher. Um, only seen another one like it. Really nice bracelet. It is an acquired taste, uh, but as I'm retro watches, there's no denying that that is retro. So if it was on the wrist, of course, this is kind of the look you're gonna get. You have to excuse my furry arms. Um, but it is, I just love this one. Out of all my anodigies, this is one of my particular favorites. Uh, I've got two more citizens to go and then we'll do the Seacos. So I'll now pick this one. And here we go. So this has got a sort of a blue dial. It's like the ugly duckling in a way. This strange configuration of putting the uh, the analog bit down here in the left hand corner uh, is unusual, um, but that's what drew me to it. Um, I'm trying to think what the model is on this one. I think it is a, a 41-9559. I'll probably put it on the screen just to be sure. And it's got all the usual features actually. So we have an alarm. Uh, I can't see what that's doing. I think I'm stuck in alarm, so there we go. So we have the uh, stopwatch, which is doing milliseconds, which is crazy, and a little icon there. So you can see what it was trying to do in the 80s, just to give you all these little quirky bits on the LCD, which in, the, in its day was amazing. And that also, I think, doubles up as the light, that particular button. Yes, you can just see it fading into there. Um, but as I say, really interesting one, quite a nice, looking bracelet to it as well. Uh, I can't remember how much I paid for this, to be honest with you. Um, it was a, probably about 30 pounds for this one. And wearing it, you know, it, it's nice. It's definitely nice. People do look at it and think, what on, earth, <laughs> what on earth is that? Why has it got that little clock down there? But you've got to be a child of the 80s, I think, to sort of appreciate them. Okay, the last citizen is this one. This is another Anadigi temp, and this is an 8982. So they made it a little bit more rounder. So they've got all these sort of rounded links and the case was rounder. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that these are the less desirable of, of the whole range of the Anadigi digitals because a lot of them are a bit more chunky um, or square. I mean, you know, you can compare it with this to this one. However, it's all the same kind of features. Uh, there's the temperature again. Sensors are slightly different on this one down here. Um, you need the instruction book to work this out. It does so many different things. I think we've even got dual time on it as well. Um, but again, 
they're really cool nice looking things uh, I, what did I do on this one I didn't do anything really I bought it it was it was even in, in the box uh, it was working uh, the alarm wasn't working and all that was because the spring was missing uh, which connects it to the piezo speaker from the board in the back and a tip for you guys if you are working on digital watches and the spring is missing all you need to do is get some spring bars which are the bits that hold on to the uh, hold the bracelets on they're very cheap break them in half inside a spring bar is a very fine spring and depending on the diameter of the spring bar will give you the diameter of the spring as well and then you can just cut them to size on you know one spring bar spring will probably do about three or four uh, um, springs for the for the board itself so there's a little tip for you guys again these are nice I like this for what it is you know it's a bit of a collector's piece it'll only appreciate over the years I think uh, I do enjoy watching it uh, wearing it sorry uh, I prefer this one to the other one ironically I like the, the smoothed out um, edges so there we are that is my citizen range now we'll go on to the robot watches from Seiko so you have to excuse this one because it is not uh, working at the moment and that is just because the battery has gone uh, these are uh, the, the module is a H239 uh, the model on this one is a, a 502B it's from the early 80s looks like it's got a speaker which is what drew me to it and it's actually a bit of a fake there is a speaker at the back and it comes up a little tube and comes out through the crystal the crystal's actually got a hole in it but they've made it look like a, a sort of bassy speaker there so it is cool in that sense you could you could say that these are two eyes and that's a mouth as well that's pretty obvious to say um, the analogs quite interested on these I'll show it on the next one actually because it's the same module uh, to change the time is quite a cool feature uh, and then the LCD uh, you've got uh, I think I don't remember if you've got a stopwatch on these or not but this has got a very typical burn this is common uh, in these watches of this era um, these are getting very very hard to find now working examples of these and they do go for a bit of money uh, this one was beaten up and I couldn't find a replacement crystal in part because it has this hole in I guess there is one out there but I couldn't find it uh, but I restored the entire case so I polished it all up I refinished these brushed edges here and then I did the whole thing with the bracelet as well so I there's polished inside there and uh, sort of ground or brushed across so I, I, I reapplied all of that and I think I did the clasp as well yes um, great great watches really a talking point when you're wearing these so we'll put that one to one side uh, this one again is a H239 this is a 500C and I think it's from 1981 this presented me the biggest challenge of all of them um, it took two but well, I took another donor to get it going uh, this came in a massive job lot of Seiko's and if you've watched my other Seiko videos you'll keep hearing me talking about the the job lot this was one of them I was fortunate I managed to buy a new crystal uh, I refinished absolutely everything and I spent a lot of time to get all these angles right and polished up and the brushed applied onto the this same bracelet as the other one actually uh, this is my all-time favorite of the Seiko robot watches and I think it's because I put so much work into it to be honest with you um, the donor wouldn't work on the analog as well and the problem was that the coil but well, one coil was broken the other coil had a tiny little hole in it and in desperation I used some conductive paint and I just like on a almost on a needle in my um, on, on my microscope and I just dabbed it on in the in the area uh, and hoped and left it for a day came back and the watch was working and it's worked ever since so I've been very 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 fortunate there um, it did take hours and hours and hours to get this one to go but really was worth it in the end so you could have the display like that for instance it's telling you the the day uh, it has an alarm and that is the other time zone so it doesn't have a store it does have a stopwatch there we go so I can't even remember the features of my watches how poor is that uh, the feature I was telling you about is if I pull the crown out on this and click it once it 
it moves a second or a, or a minute should we say if I move it twice it's not going to do it now is it there we go off it goes electronically and it will do a whole hour or you could stop it by turning it backwards one way and again I can go backwards with that as well it's just difficult for me to do it on camera no it's not going to work for me today however that is that watch you see me posting this a lot in the forums because I do wear it a lot there we go look at that the white dial is really cool really really cool okay the last two um, this particular one is a Seiko H448 500A is the model number on this one and the only reason I've kept this is this this also came in the job lot it wasn't working and I took it completely to bits I mended a few tracks in there and I think then I had to get another donor for something else because it just wouldn't work properly but I got it to work in the end and I've kept it ever since uh, and to be fair I've never really worn it it's nice thin it's got a lovely little profile on it for that reason um, let's just put it on for you you know they do look nice this one looks particularly nice however I have so many it's I, deciding in the morning what to wear is uh, is always always a challenge so we've got a stopwatch I can hear the alarm there's the date uh, the time and the alarm so the usual standard features I haven't done anything on the case of this I didn't finish uh, well it looks like I finished the uh, clasp actually but I may have given it a clean and a bit of a polish that's all but it's nice just for the memory that, that the job lot must have had about I'm trying to think now about 10 watches and I've done nearly all of them has to be said so I'm keeping them just for the memory more than anything else so I'll take you on to the last one this is a Seiko 601 524a and I bought this for an astonishing nine pounds and it's almost mint condition okay there's this little battle scar on there you can see but other than that the crystals perfect the straps perfect the clasp is perfect uh, but it wasn't working and I couldn't get it working and there's a guy in the group called Roger I can't remember his surname sorry Roger if you're watching um, but he sent me a load of donor uh, and a digi parts and in there was uh, a board for this and of course put the board in and it worked so I've kept it ever since because it is this is like another collector's piece I think really because of the condition it's in it obviously failed early in its life um, you know the battery must have leaked or something went wrong inside and the owners just put it away and fortunately there's obviously been in a nice drawer or in a box or something and that's why it's not been um, abused for all the years and as you can see it's got a second hand this one this the other one by comparison doesn't and that's deliberate it doesn't it's not like it, it's missing one it just doesn't have one uh, all the usual features again I think so we've got the time we've got the stopwatch and the alarm and we'll just put that one on for you and there we are so I think they're, they're, they're quite a cool thing, the Anadigis. Uh, they're not everybody's taste, as I've said before, um, but they have a little bit of maybe hor horological history to them. They are a part of uh, the watch progression. And in the 80s, certainly, like I say, in my school time, it was these and it was digital calculator watches that we all desired and wanted and wore. And Possibly soon in my, another one of my videos, I'm going to do all my uh, digital watches and you'll see lots of calculators in there as well. Um, quick update on how things are going with my, uh, my bench and my workshop. We are nearly there. I'm hoping by this time next week that I should be back up and running so I can start uh, mending watches again and start filming some projects that I've got uh, for the channel. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like uh, it really does mean a lot uh, comment down below I'd love to hear your comments I read every one of them I do try and respond to all of them if I can uh, you know tell me what you think about any do you do you hate them do you love them is it something you've never considered but now you've seen them maybe you would you know it'd be interesting to hear your feedback so you know other than that guys 
keep this one a little bit shorter than my usual video so you know thank you very very much for watching i do hope you enjoyed this one and i will catch you soon in the next video thank you